respected dignitaries on the head table, and my dear friends, good afternoon. As I stand before this August gathering, I owe my gratitude to the organizer of the su summit for having provided me an opportunity to address this prestigious forum. My special thanks to Honorable Pope Francis and Honorable Susanna Medena, the diplomatic president of IAWJ, who very graciously nominated me from Pakistan to participate in this summit. I would like to start off by differentiating between the two often confused forms of organized crime, human smuggling and human trafficking. Human smuggling is the transportation or illegal entry of a person across an international border in violation of government laws. Whereas trafficking is an aggravated form of human smuggling involving an exploitative process that starts with recruiting persons to reaching the ultimate des destination by, adopt by adopting a careful line of action that mainly composes of coercion, fraud, and deception. Trafficking in person is in fact the negation of one of the very basic right, which in a way can be described as modern day slavery, whereby humans are traded for the purpose of sexual slavery, forced labor, or commercial sexual exploitation for the traffickers or others. It exists in various forms and man manifestations and has risen to such scale that it has transfo transformed into an organized transactional crime. Virtually every country in the world is affected by this crime. Every year, thousands of men, women, and children fall into the hands of traffickers in their own countries and abroad. The challenge for all the countries, rich and poor, is to target the criminals who exploit desperate people and to protect and assist victims of trafficking and smuggled migrants, many of whom endure unimaginable hardship in their bids for a better life. As it is a global problem and no society can possibly allow such a menace to flourish, it has drawn considerable attention among the community of nations and many countries are making their utmost best efforts for fight against this crime. Respected judges, as far as my country is concerned, Pakistan is an Islamic country and Islam prohibited all kinds of slavery. According to the words of Holy Quran revealed upon the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the shackles of humanity were broken, and humanity was freed from the tyrants of time and for all the times to come. Under Article 11 of Constitution of Pakistan, slavery is not legally recognized concept. Together with all kinds of forced labor and trafficking in person is prohibited. But unfortunately, Pakistan, due to its strategic geography, has become a source, transit, as well as destination country for human trafficking. Victims of trafficking from Central Asia and South Asian states are trafficked to and from the Pakistan into the Middle East and Europe, thus creating many challenges for us to deal with. Pakistan was earlier a transit country for human trafficking, but has increasingly become country of origin, transit, and destination, partially. An analysis revealed that trafficking was being carried out at the smaller scale of 1% through authorized air, sea, and land routes of the country, but at a large scale of 99% through unauthorized routes via the Pakistan border, where no immigration check posts exist. In the western border of Pakistan, that is border with Afghanistan, the issue is more serious and ripened on account of the ongoing war of Afghanistan and refugees that keep coming into Pakistan. These refugees use Pakistani soil as the country of destination, as well as country of transit the border of forests, which make it very difficult for the government to deal with unregistered inflow of the refugees in the country. This is evidence of the fact that where the menace of human trafficking is prevalent in Pakistan, it has also begun to diminish due to countries' increased implementation of legislative measures and greater efforts of law enforcement agencies. Taking the problem of human trafficking seriously, Pakistan decided to meet international obligation by effectively controlling the menace through legal measures, the government of Pakistan takes measure in the following pieces of legislation in order to combat trafficking. Slide, please. Who is saying? The next also. Prevention, these, these all are the laws which we are dealing with the human trafficking. 
Prevention and Control of Human Trafficking Ordinance, PACATO 2002, is the principal instrument to prevent and punish trafficking in person, especially to children. This was the first law in our country which covered all aspects of the crime of human trafficking and provided guiding principle of law, enforcement agencies, courts, and NGOs for effective control, eradication, and rehabilitation of the offense, offenders, and the victims. All the offenses under the ordinance have been declared cognizable, non billable and non compoundable Beside promulgation of these laws, Pakistan has made a lot of efforts to eradicate and human trafficking by establishing some agencies, including FIA, the country's chief, inter uh, chief national law enforcement agency, with the mandate to prevent, suppress, and control human trafficking and smuggling or migrant. Slide, please. In 2000. Five, no, the back, back, yes. In 2005, FIA established Anti-Trafficking Unit, ATU, which has its branches throughout the major cities of each province of Pakistan. It aims to prevent and protect victims of trafficking, build a database of human traffickers, develop a referral mechanism for shifting victims to shelter homes for their security, rehabilitation, and repatriation. All these efforts at the state level has resulted into significant improvement in the enforcement of Paketo, which has resulted in a 71% increase in the arrest of culprits, 66 increase in the arrest of absconders, and 92% increase in their convictions. All these efforts also resulted in Pakistan's elevation from Tier 3 to the U.S. State Department watch list to Tier 2. As far as judiciary of Pakistan is concerned, it always plays a key role in protecting victims and punish perpetrators, perpetrators, which is second to none. As an institution, the judiciary of Pakistan has always commanded considerable rep respect from the people of the country. Judicial activism, recently been evidenced in Pakistan, has been instrumental in the judiciary, taking so motor notice of key issues such as the landmark decision regarding declaring brickling workers, bonded laborers, and jirga systems unlawful while there is high pay of the judiciary taking notice of trafficking issues. The judiciary of Pakistan has been striving hard for rule of law and upholding the justice in all spheres of life. However, to tackle and curb the menace of human trafficking in every form, since 1979, Immigration Ordinance 1979 is in vague with consistence and human traffickers, who without any legal authorization induce and fleece out money from the innocent citizen on the pretext of sending them abroad, and the country is comprising of district judge, and stringent punishment to the extent of 14 years is awarded to the site-like perpetrators. In Pakistan, judges have to decide site-like cases of victims who are purported to be accused persons under the prevalent law when are offloaded as well as deported from the airport, possessed with fake and fabricated documents, notwithstanding the fact that those are provided to them by the human traffickers mischievously and fraudulently, despite receiving hefty amount from them. The courts in Pakistan, in abundance of such like cases, vary liberally with sympathy, impose little fines, while if actual offenders, human trafficker, is nabbed and sent to the face trial, awarded severe punishment as discussed above. Beside, the judges, beside this, judges while dealing with such like cases make endeavors to get effect amicable settlements between the intending immigrants and human traffickers, if later returns actual amount to him, which is also a sign of non, uh, of substantial justice by passing the legal technicalities, uh, technicalities, this is also a form of ADR, which is being encouraged generously by the most dynamic, vibrant, and foresighted Honorable Chief Justice of Lahore High Court, Sayyid Mansoor Ali Shah, to make his dreams true. Numerous ADR centers have been established in almost all the districts of the province to alleviate the miseries of litigant and public throughout the province. Dear audience, we must admit that the human request, whether be of the food or other biological needs of either gender, if going to a last extent, are unbearable. It may lead one to the point of no return. It is equally true that due to multiple reasons, like poverty, ignorance of law, unemployment, constant terrorism, etc., people are desperate to go abroad for finding better prospect of prosperity. This is an other ugliest episode, let me narrate before this August gathering, which is in my personal knowledge. 
when an old man of 70 years receiving dead body of his eldest son at the airport, the presence of officials of FIA who reportedly died in a container of human traffickers, but at the same time was requesting to FIA officer to get settled his another son for immigration. This is the most horrendous reality. In this context, ambition, ambitions of the old man seem to be noble, but consequences are against human dignity and human life. Respected dignitaries, slide please. Before concluding my talk, it is proposed that regular interactive seminars of judges and prosecutors of the developing countries must be arranged under the patronage of this August form in favor. In future, and efforts must be made to streamline of immigration-related laws for achieving more effective results to curb the menace of human trafficking with more vital and effectiveness. To identify the real, real and, uh, and uh, real causes of human trafficking in a uniform map, uh, manners, international efforts must be made. Mafias and cartels of such like swindlers be unearthed with joint operation world over through Interpol to create awareness through print, electronic, and com comparatively recent phenomena of social media so that desperate, innocent, intending immigrants be safe from, to fell, uh, from to falling prey to the human traffickers. A strong international coordination and cooperation need to be made for this through bilateral agreement between Pakistan and other countries for providing relief to the victims abroad and for solving the problems of Pakistan nationals confined in foreign countries. Law enforcement agencies be given equipped with latest and modern technique to reinforce their strength and capacity building. There is a need to mobilize all the relevant stakeholders to transform this institution and put people them at the center of public service. For this, there is a great need to mobilize creative initiative and empower all the institution to be in innovative in their approach. It is crucial to have government and civil society establish close partnership in the fight against these crimes through better regional and international cooperation and law enforcement investigation and prosecution, criminal network can be interrupted in addition with combined prevention and protection strategies, strengthening capacities, and providing assistance and protection for vulnerable victims, the menace of human trafficking in the world can be controlled in effective manner. At la the last but not least, developed countries including U UK, USA, Australia, and other European countries should financially support the developing and poor countries for elimination of poverty and, in, and unemployment. It, it is also in need of the present time that developed countries should be liberal in granting visa, work permit, citizenship to the people of developing and poor countries for raising their standard of life because without elimination of poverty from the world, it is very difficult to control and curb the human trafficking. In the end, I am again highly indebted, humbled, and honored to extend my gratitude to Revered Pope Francis and his wonderful team of Academy for providing me this opportunity to speak of my heart and soul on behalf of Judiciary of Pakistan. I am also thankful to the distinguished guests gathered in the summit, the participants, other speakers from all over the world for giving me a very patient hearing. Thank you so much.